How effective are our vaccines against new forms of COVID-19? A preliminary study from Israel appears to suggest the BioNTech-Pfizer jab offers less protection against the Delta variant than previous strains, just 64%. That's a lot lower than other estimates of nearly 90%. So does this change how we fight the pandemic? The Delta strain has changed the transmission dynamics everywhere and in Israel also. We know it is more infectious from person to person. We also know it has some better capacity to evade the um, immune system as compared to the alpha strain. The good news is that fully vaccinated people rarely suffer severe effects, even with the Delta variant. And despite rising cases, Israel hasn't seen a death in over two weeks. I'm Rob Watts in Berlin. Welcome to this COVID-19 special. In Israel, coronavirus case numbers are creeping up again. The country has been roundly praised for its swift vaccination programme, but health officials there are proceeding with caution, with a local study suggesting the BioNTech-Pfizer jab is not as effective against the invading Delta variant as previously thought. Younger Israelis are being encouraged to get vaccinated. Adam Goodwach is taking his daughters Leah and Abby to get vaccinated. More and more young Israelis aged 12 to 15 are now getting their jab, like here at this small clinic in Kfar Saba, not least because of the fast-spreading Delta variant and because many have plans for the summer. Uh, I think it's really good. Uh, it gives us much more freedom and it's nice to finally, you know, Corona's over soon, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I think it's important. <laughs> It's still not settled because other countries have still not, not all of the countries have gotten the, have gotten the opportunity to have the vaccines, but hopefully we'll be able to go soon. The Delta variant has driven infections to levels not seen in Israel since April, mainly among unvaccinated people. Because we still have a nice amount of people that are not vaccinated. Young people, like you see here, we are increasing on vaccinating them. Young people that can't be vaccinated, and we still see a portion of the elderly people are not still vaccinated for various reasons. Some vaccinated people also have been infected. For now, the number needing hospital treatment remains low, although figures are rising. So we do see people who actually acquired the uh, Delta after being immunized, and they can transmit it. Yet uh, their uh, chances to be severely ill, to be hospitalized or to die, are slim. So we, we definitely see a very important role for the uh, immunization. The new Israeli government is pushing for 12 to 15-year-olds to be inoculated now with the BioNTech-Pfizer vaccine. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is appealing to young people directly. I know how much you want to enjoy the summer, and you can. I also have four kids your age, and they too want to enjoy the summer. We don't want to impose any restrictions on anyone, no bans on parties or trips, no bubbles, nothing. But you need to talk to your parents and get vaccinated so that we have a wonderful summer with no closures and no restrictions. Israel has reimposed an indoor mask mandate and tightened controls at the main international airport. Paul Goodwach is relieved that his teenage daughters are now protected. It was somewhat of a difficult decision because there are a lot of unknowns, but there are a lot of unknowns in parenting. How long do you give them on their iPad? What time should they go to bed? What food should they eat? Uh, what I know is that the vaccine works. Israel had big problems with the pandemic, and since everyone got vaccinated over the age of 16, the problems have all but disappeared. Further restrictions might be imposed if the Delta variant continues to spread. But for now, Israel aims to get most youngsters over 12 fully vaccinated before some of its doses expire later this month. Well, we can now speak to Professor Eyal Leshem, who is a director at Israel's largest hospital, the Sheba Medical Center. Thanks for joining us on the COVID-19 special. Uh, can you just tell us how concerned you are about the rising number of coronavirus cases in Israel? 
Well, we are not very concerned because we have by now pretty good information about the vaccine effectiveness in preventing severe disease and hospitalization. And what we learned here in Israel and also from information that comes from the UK is that the vaccine is more than 90% effective in preventing severe disease and hospitalization. So while we may see an increase in the number of infected, we will probably only see a very mild increase in severe disease. But we have had this study from Israel suggesting the BioNTech-Pfizer vaccine is less effective at stopping the spread of the Delta variant, 60% rather than close to 90, like you were just saying. And um, what's your take on those results? Well, it is important to differentiate the vaccine effectiveness in preventing infection which is not very good against Delta, which means even if you're vaccinated, you may still become infected. And this has to be differentiated from the vaccine effectiveness against a severe disease. The primary goal of the vaccine, the main objective is to make sure even if you get infected, you don't uh, develop a severe disease and you don't get hospitalized or at uh, mortality risk. And in this, the vaccine is still very, very effective. So does that effectively mean that there's no action required based upon this suggestion that the Pfizer vaccine is less effective at stopping the spread of the, vaccine, of the, uh, the variant? I would suggest that the public health actions or restrictions that will be taken in response to this increase in cases are going to be balanced against the relatively low risk of a sharp increase in hospitalizations. So in reality, what this means is we may be required to wear masks or we may reinstate the green badge system to make sure only vaccinated people go into crowded spaces. But we don't need to close schools, we don't need lockdowns, and we don't need to close workspaces, which is the main, uh, the most important things to maintain a normal or relatively normal uh, lifestyle. Vaccinations in Israel have plateaued at around 60% of the population. Is that enough? Well, obviously, it was enough back in April when the main virus in circulation was the Alpha, the UK virus. And now with the more infective Delta virus, it is not enough. So uh, we will, on one hand, try to increase the proportion vaccinated, the vaccine coverage, but on the other hand, monitor closely what is the real impact of this increase in cases or infections on the number of severe cases. So should there be more vaccination of teenagers, for example? Is that, is that the next step? Well, on one hand, yes, more vaccinations of teenagers and increase the effort to get this small proportion, about 10% of people that are aged over 50, to get a full vaccine, two doses, as soon as possible. Professor Aya Lesham from the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Aviv, thanks for joining us on the COVID-19 special. Thank you. And now is the part of the program where we put one of your questions to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. I had COVID-19. How long should I wait to get vaccinated? And should I get one or two doses? There are several layers to this question. And the first thing that I want to say is that although the data that we have on immunity after infection indicates that protection is probably quite long lasting, um, healthcare authorities like the WHO and the CDC still recommend that people who've recovered from COVID-19 get vaccinated. Um, that's because Evidence also seems to show that a, a post-infection vaccination kind of kicks the immune response um, up a couple of notches and, and might make you even less likely to be infected again at some point if you're exposed. Uh, recommendations for how long you should wait to get vaccinated after recovery are, are fairly vague, but basically boil down to waiting at least a couple of weeks. Um, there's not a lot of time pressure, as the vast majority of people who've recovered appear well protected from possible reinfection for months. But as of now, authorities definitely recommend you do get it done if you can. The question of whether you should get one dose or two is a little more complex. Um, in a study published in April, for example, 
Uh, U.S. researchers discovered that antibody response in people who'd recovered from the disease soared if they got just one shot of a messenger RNA vaccine um, to the equivalent of what happened in someone who'd never been infected after getting two shots. Other research indicates there might not be many added benefits to getting a second shot, which has led authorities, for instance, in some countries here in Europe to recommend most people who tested positive for COVID-19 in the past get just one shot, um, at least for now. The millions of doses that move saves can then be used to speed up full protection for those who've never had the disease. Um, but really nailing down a firm across the board recommendation, uh, whether two shots is best or if just one uh, really suffices, it looks like that's going to take a while, um, not least because the booster effect will differ from person to person and from vaccine to vaccine. Now let's take a look at some of the other coronavirus stories making headlines. Pakistan has received 2.5 million doses of the Moderna vaccine donated by the United States through the COVAX initiative. So far, Pakistan has partially vaccinated around 13 and a half million people. It's welcome news as another wave of the virus is currently spreading through South Asia. A zoo in California has vaccinated its animals against COVID-19. The Oakland Zoo says the jabs were donated by a veterinary pharmaceutical company and not taken from vaccine stocks for humans. Among the residents receiving the shot, the zoo's big cats and a black bear named Kern. And that's all from this edition of the COVID-19 special. Until next time, take care.